speaker view. Do you see yourself? I see Randy. You're on, Susie. Good morning and welcome. It's so good to be with you again this morning. But I do have to say, I am missing seeing you all in person uh, more and more every day. I am so excited about today's service, and most of you, I think, know why. It is because of our guest speaker, Randy Granger. Some of you remember that a while back, and I am so sorry, I don't know, a year, two years, I, I time, I don't know. We had Randy in person for a concert, and um, I fell in love with his music. Today, he's coming uh, to us from his home in New Mexico via Zoom. If you don't know, Randy is an award-winning singer, songwriter, composer, and a musician. He will be giving a message this morning, as well as sharing some of his beautiful music with us. I personally want to throw this in. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, many musicians like Randy have had to cancel all their paying gigs, <laughs> for which many rely on for their livelihood. For those who don't know Randy's music, um, I just recommend viewing him on YouTube to fall in love with it. And better yet, Randy has CDs out there um, that you can purchase. So yes, oh, I even have Randy on my Pandora, see? So yes, that was a plug. These are some words that I found um, from Luther Standing Bear. The attempted transformation of the Indian by the white man has led to chaos and has resulted only from the fruits of the white man's disobedience of a fundamental and spiritual law. Civilization has been thrust upon me since the days of the reservation, and it has not added one whit to my sense of justice, to my reverence for the right of life, to my love for truth, honesty, or to my faith in Wankantanka, the god of the Lakota. For after all the great religions have been revealed by brilliant scholars, or have been written in fine books and embellished in fine language, and also uh, with fine covers, even finer, man, all man, is still confronted by the great mystery. I want to add, um, I found this last week and um luther standing bear was a poet a writer uh he died in 1939 and i i just found out last night reading it that he died in 1939 of the flu during a flu epidemic It is time for the chalice lighting. If you have a candle or a chalice, it is time to light it. Oh no. Blessed is the fire that burns deep in the soul. 
is the flame of the human spirit touched into being by the mystery of life. It is the fire of reason, the fire of compassion, the fire of faith. It is the fire of love burning deep in the human heart, the divine glow in every life. Somebody's crying and no one hears Scared of dying and no one's near Somebody's losing hope While the wheels of power keep turning Light a candle in the darkness The Apache Blessing. May the sun bring you energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow strengthen your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Now, as we share a moment of silent reflection on the words said here today and the world around us, here are words from the great Shawnee chief Tecumseh. When you arise in the morning, give thanks for the morning light, for your life and your strength. Give thanks for your food and the joy of living. If you see no reason for giving thanks, the fault lies within yourself. Now let's take a moment of silent reflection.
Now please join me in reciting our congregational covenant. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Here at UUCLC, we are thankful for the time and the talent that our members and friends provide to make our congregation what it is. We are also thankful for the treasures our members and friends give to help the congregation do the work we are called to do here and in our community. Every gift, no matter the size, help combine together to further our dream to create a better world. Peace.
Good morning. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Good morning from uh, southern New Mexico, down in Las Cruces on the border area. There was a time when a Swedish minister, he, he assembled the chiefs of the Susquehanna Indians and he made a sermon to them and he said, I want to acquaint you with the principal historic facts on which our religion is founded such as the fall of the first parents by eating an apple, the coming of Christ to repair the mischief, his miracles, his suffering, etc. When he had finished, an Indian orator stood up to thank him. And he said, what you have told us, he says, is all very good. It is indeed bad to eat apples. It is better to make them all into cider. We are much obliged by your kindness in coming so far to tell us these things, which you have heard from your mothers. In return, I will tell you, some of the things we have heard from our mothers. He said in the beginning, our fathers had only the flesh of animals to subsist on. And if their hunting was unsuccessful, they would starve. So two of our young hunters, having killed a deer, made a fire in the woods to boil some parts of it. When they were about to satisfy their hunger, they beheld a beautiful young woman who descended from the clouds and sat herself on a hill, which you see on those yonder mountains, the Blue Mountains. They said to each other, it is the spirit. She has smelt our boiling venison and wishes to eat. Let us offer some. So they presented her with the tongue, which was the best part. And she was pleased with the taste of it. And she said, your kindnesses shall be rewarded. Come to this place after 13 moons. and You will find something that will be of great benefit in nourishing you and your children to the last generations. They did so. And in 13, month, 13 moons, they came back, and to their surprise, they found plants they'd never seen before, but which from the ancient times have been consistently cultivated a, a, amongst us to a great advantage. For her right hand had touched the ground, they found maize. For her left hand had touched, they found kidney beans. And where her backside sat, they found tobacco, all sacred plants. So the good missionary stood up and was disgusted with this tale, and he said, what I delivered to you were sacred truths, but what you tell me is mere fiction and fable and falsehood. Well, the Indian, offended, he replied, my brother, it seems your friends have not done justice in your education, for they have not well instructed you in the common rules of civility. You see that we, who understood and practiced those rules, believed all of your stories. So why do you refuse to believe ours? That account was recorded by one Benjamin Franklin in his book, Remarks Concerning the Savages. So Susie's, um, Susie's reading was, was interesting to hear, and, and it sort of goes in line with, uh, with what I'm talking about, too, which is spiritual lessons of a pandemic from a Native Amer American perspective. So I'd like to give you a little bit of context, a little bit of background to it. In Columbus's writings of the Arawak people, he said, they invite you to share anything they possess. And so as much love with their hearts went with it. Further observing, he said, how easy it would be to convert these people and make them work for us. Within a hundred years, the Arawak Indians were completely destroyed as a result of subjugation, but mostly the diseases that were introduced from the Eastern hemisphere. This is not to shame anyone, but it is instructive. Europeans brought with them to this new world, smallpox, measles, bubonic plague, cholera, typhoid, pleurisy, scarlet fever, diphtheria, mumps, whooping cough, colds, gonorrhea, cancroid, pneumonia, some influenza, respiratories, and possibly tuberculosis as well as alcohol. It's estimated that some 93 serious epidemics and pandemics from the old world pathogens came to this new world from the early 16th century to uh, up till about the beginning of the 20th century. The thing was, these diseases came again and again and again and again. That would be like our current pandemic, COVID-19 COVID sort of mutating and becoming a novel virus every, every four years or so. It would be devastating. But the most serious one was smallpox. And in 1521, smallpox came to the Aztecs. At that time, it was a kingdom of about 50 million people. They had conquered quite a, quite a bit of those, but also quite a bit of the other uh, villages had decided to join in with them. 50 million people. Within 200 years, the mostly novel diseases to at least our immune system had killed 
of the indigenous population of the Western Hemisphere. Chief Red Cloud famously said, when he appeared at Congress, he said, when you first came, we were very many and you were few. Now you are many and we are getting very few and we are very poor. The other part of the, of the pandemics, if, if you know anything about what the um, Spanish did, especially here in the Southwest, a lot of that was driven by stories of, of gold which was actually corn that was drying up up on the roofs of, um, of the pueblos like Zuni and greed, and the other was religious dominance. So now here, here we are again, aren't we, with another novel virus, an RNA virus, the COVID-19 virus that's decimating the Navajo Nation. Some 8,600 positive cases, over 420 deaths as of July 19th. Some 30% of the Navajo don't have running water. A lot of them don't have electricity. So washing your hands, of course, is a luxury that we seem to, you know, that, that we take for granted. So what reminders are being shown to us? Um, what lessons does this new guest bring us? What spiritual gifts are we taught to learn? It's teaching us, isn't it, this virus? But what we're really being taught is our response to it. Change is uncomfortable. Loss is uncomfortable, of course. We're not the first people to suffer a, <clears throat> through a pandemic. Certainly, when you go back and you look, I was able to find the, the first epidemic, as, as it was called, was uh, way back in, I think, uh, 5600 BCE, somewhere in, somewhere in Greece. So viruses have been around a lot longer than, than we have pandemics, epidemics diseases have been around much longer than we have. So we're not the first people to experience war, violence, and genocide, but this is us, isn't it? This is our, our turn. So of course it feels very new, it feels very real, it feels very, very scary at, at, at some point. It's tough to know how to respond some days. Some days I, I don't know what to think. Some days, I, especially in the early days, once all of my gigs had been canceled, within a matter of um, within a matter of a week, starting on March 13th or March 10th. Now I can't remember. Like um, Susie said, time becomes so strange and distorted. But what I'm trying to do now, I've come up with a new way to respond. I use the 19 in COVID-19 as a guide. In other words, I limit myself to no more than 19, sometimes 20 minutes a day to watching, reading, listening to the news and especially social media. I'll post to social media, but really limit how much time I'm, I'm, I'm exposed to it. I also set my meditation timer, which I use every day to 19 minutes as a reminder. I write down every morning 19 people, 19 situations, to think of and I list them and when I'm doing my morning meditation and prayers I include every one of those people but it's always something new 19 whether those be my enemies the protesters in, in Portland the, the immigrants that we still have down here just south of uh, south of me I write down everyone 19 people and I I offer to each one of them thoughts of peace and healing and light now, however you pray or don't pray, just hold them in thought. It's attributed that Thomas Merton once said or wrote, if the only prayer you say is thank you, that will suffice. It's easy to find 19 reasons to be grateful or appreciative. I also include, include the healthcare workers and the frontline people. I have quite a few friends who are nurses and doctors. I've been volunteering at the hospice here for about 14 years and so I include those people and all of my morning players prayers 19 I'm going to tell you about a technique maybe you've already heard about it it's called Tonglen it's a Tibetan practice a Tibetan Buddhist practice it essentially um, Tonglen in Tibetan is the practice of sending and receiving Tong means sending out or letting go and the Len part means receiving or accepting Tonglen is ordinary practice in sitting med meditation using your breath out. Put simply, you breathe in all the bad, all the negative, and you breathe out all the, all the good. So you're taking in all of the suffering of all the sentient beings. 
when you first begin to practice it, it'll feel, feel kind of self-defeating, probably even a little bit silly, but that's okay, stay with it. The more negativity that we can take in with a sense of openness and expansion and compassion into our heart area, the more goodness there is to breathe out. So there's really nothing to lose. But really, Tonglen is best practice on the fly. Like say you're at a store and somebody's not wearing a mask or they're going the wrong direction, at least here in New Mexico, going the wrong direction in the grocery store. Those feelings that you have, or maybe you witness some sort of uh, confrontation about the mask wearing issue. Maybe you read something online that really up upsets you to your core. That's the perfect time to practice Tonglen. You breathe in that situation. You breathe in all of those feelings that you have towards the situation. Be honest with yourself. And you're going to breathe out all the light, all the empathy, all the compassion that you possibly can. Keep doing this until you feel it transmute, until you feel it change. It takes practice. Anything takes practice. That's why it's called practice. I'm a musician. If I didn't practice, I would sound terrible. <laughs> so some of us are feeling well, this ambiguous loss, that's a sort of grief that you can't quite pinpoint, but you feel it. And we're having grief over losing our, our way of life, over our income, our routine, our friends, our churches, our social gatherings, our trips. Many of us were probably feeling lonely and isolated. And definitely, I think every single person is feeling fear and uncertainty. And we have a hyper self-concern. It's based in the fight or, fight or flight system. So we become very aware of time and, and, and space and safety, and that's perfectly normal. There's this word in Tibetan that I uh, uh, came across that I, I've always liked, yetang che. Yetang che means totally wiped out, tired, exhausted at a, at a, at a, at a soul level, at a core level. I, I know some of us are feeling that way, probably some of you even. I know I have felt that way at times. Just uh, an, an exhaustion, throwing up of, of the hands and going, okay, I've, I can't take any more. Please, no more new things. Hornet, hornet wasps? No, please, I don't need any more of those. I, I don't need the, I, I've had the problem with these squirrels in my yard. These, I call them zombie squirrels because they keep eating everything in sight. So I'm thinking, I can't take anything new. I can't take any new challenges. But the current population, getting back to the Native American a aspect and, and closing with this, Current population of Native Americans is about 6.8 million, give or take a few. That's about 2.09% uh, of the population of the United States. When you look at the Holocaust that our people experienced, and my ancestry is Mayan and Apache. When you look at the Holocaust experienced by our people, don't take away the sadness or the, or the shame or, or the guilt. What we want you to take away is the resilience of our people. We're very much still here, and if you've ever been to the gathering of, of nations up in Albuquerque, which I've had the honor of playing for quite a few times, you see the power and you see the beautiful resilience. You see these 94 year old women dressed in their beautiful regalia that they've handmade by themselves and they're walking down the stairs and they're going so slowly, nobody hurries them. Once they get on that floor and dance with 5,000 other dancers and you feel the powwow drum, the heart, it's powerful and such a great reminder. So when that gets back into play, I ho hope you can all come to, come to experience it. But really, they're lessons of survival and ancestry, stories, and future generations. It's said that when the Sioux tribe makes their decisions, or certainly when they used to especially, they would always make the decision as a community with the seventh generation in their mind, always in their heart. It's said that men and women had an equal voice in all the decisions. They would listen to their elders, actually listen to them, ask their advice. They would also invite the ancestors in. Then they would tell stories about how resilient they had to be in the past in order to learn from those stories too. So they would offer tobacco and songs and drums and cedar, sacred things. These are rituals. So what are your rituals nowadays? How do you connect? When the pandemic began, it was so overwhelming to my mind that what I started to do is I started to imagine my loved ones who had gone and I was I would have a conversation with each of them in their minds and I would say, let me tell you about this thing that's happening now. It's, it's this virus and I would give them all the details and I would imagine what they would tell me back, what their response would be. Uh, that was a very powerful connection, very 
emotional. So that's one ritual that you could try, write, write, write letters to them. But whatever you do, connect, connect to your feelings, connect to others, listen, tell your stories, listen to, to their stories, because we are a community. This world is a community on this beautiful planet flying through Earth. So don't say you've never been anywhere. <laughs> to close, I'd like to end, uh, end with a beautiful poem by the author Harun Rashid. He wrote this actually back in December, but he added a bit to it in Mar on March 25th when the, when the pandemic hit and uh, people were using his, his poem so much. He said, I'm going to add a few lines. So in, in closing, this is a beautiful poem called We Fell Asleep. We fell asleep in one world and woke up in another. Suddenly, Disney is out of magic. Paris is no longer romantic. New York doesn't stand up anymore. The Chinese wall is no longer a fortress and Mecca is empty. Hugs and kisses suddenly become weapons. And not visiting parents and friends becomes an act of love. Suddenly, you realize that power and beauty and money are worthless and can't get you the oxygen you're fighting for. The world continues its life and it is beautiful. It only puts humans in cages. I think it's sending us a message. You are not necessary. The air, earth, water, and sky without you are fine. When you come back, remember that you are my guests, not my masters. So it is. Going through this week, find a space for yourself to, to, to carve out and remind your, yourself of 19 things that you can be grateful about and appreciate, 19 people. Maybe they've gone, 
Maybe you haven't met them yet. Maybe they're descendants that are coming. We will survive this. We have survived so much. And the important thing to remind yourself of is that we're part of a community, part of a, this community here, this beautiful Unitarian community, part of a larger community, part of a global community. We're also part of a solar system, part of a corner of the Milky Way. Look up. There's a beautiful comet up in the northwest sky right now, Comet Neowise, that's been flying by. So it's about community and connection in all things. Definitely first connect and commune with yourself, that community that we have going on within our own bodies. I honor my ancestors every day that I get up and I say thank you for the sacrifices you made that I can be here now, that I can appreciate the sun and the rain that we had the other, the other day, the smell of the desert after a thunderstorm. There's always something to be grateful for and appreciate. Keep that in mind as you go through this week. Blessings. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of earth community or the fire of commitment these we carry in our hearts until we are together again <laughs>